Hello, I'm Bude and welcome to episode 2 of Rebuilding Palermo as always. Thanks for joining me, I really do appreciate it. While you're all here together, smash that like button. If you're brand new, hopefully by the end of the episode, you'll become a subscriber and maybe even go and check out some of my other videos. And if you all really want to help the channel out, you can always pledge to my Patreon. You'll find a link to that and everything else down below. Now, if you have returned, thank you very much. I am loving playing this. Um, it's fresh for me. It's a new challenge for me. And it excites me and uh, I've got that football manager giddiness where I can't wait to wake up and open the laptop and play it. It's uh, a lot of fun and I can't wait. Honestly, this season is going to be insane for a few reasons um, and we're going to share them together. So yeah, as always, thank you for taking time out of a busy day. Let's just get into it. So where do I start really, especially with the team? And I'm trying to think of the best way I could possibly do this just because of the amount of players I've brought in and I was surprised by the amount of players that I could bring in and we brought in tons pretty much a whole squad now I lost lone players and I lost this group a couple of good young players went to other teams for a bit of money but nothing huge um, and then we lost guys at the end of the contract who so just moved on for bigger deals deals we couldn't offer them um, so you know there's a good chunk of players going but what I've been able to do I think has been refreshing i love rebuilding inside teams and I think the best example is if you were a fan of my channel a couple of years ago when i was at air united and i first started to develop the way i make these kind of episodes and um, the first few years i was pretty much rebuilding the majority of the team every summer with free signings um, and you don't know what you're going to get going into the summer or when you're going throughout the last part of the season when you're scouting players who are coming to end of the contract you don't know who's going to come, but I was pleasantly surprised with the team I could put together. They're not superstars, but don't forget, we're only in Serie C. Now, a quick reminder of Serie C, it is the Football League. We are no longer semi-professional. We're a professional club again, which is fantastic. Everyone's on proper contracts, which is even better. Um, and you'll know there were several leagues in Serie D. Going up to Serie C, there's three leagues. And it looks like there's lots of relegation playoffs, lots of promotion playoffs. Now, of course, you've just seen our league. This is the A group, I'm going to call it. And this is the B group. Now, Giron, does that mean group? Well, according to Google Translate, no, it means round. I'd have had, I'd have had money on that being group. Um, it means round. So that's Serie C, round C. Fair enough. So let's have a look at the rules because it can be quite exciting, this league. It's something that as soon as I looked at, I thought it's going to be fun. Really fun. Um, now, if you win it, you're promoted to Serie B. But if you come second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and even ninth, and even tenth, you go into the playoffs. I like this league Italian system. I really, really like it. Um, I like how at the fourth level, big teams like ourselves are regional. So you know you're saving money. You know you're not going to drive from one end of the country to the other. I don't like these kind of random playoff things. So. The higher we get up, if we don't win the league, the higher we get up, the further into the playoffs we go into, technically. So, you know, if we come second, we go straight into quarters, but that was tough still. Quarterfinals, there's still a long way to go from that point. So you could finish 10th and you could get promoted. And when it came to the bookies, they've got us as fifth. Even though it does come up, they've got us as fifth, but I know we can do a lot better than that. But there are some big teams. Big. Big teams. Now, I showed you a group of teams that have either crashed and burned or used to be Serie A teams. Um, but the more you play this and you're coming across these teams, you start recognising more names. You're looking at them and you're realising, wow, what's happened to you? Oh, look what you've done and where you've been and where you've come back to. Um, and I gave you a couple of ideas maybe for yourself. I'm going to give you a few more. Now, the first one is Lovano, a team I always thought of as a Serie A team. They've been up there for a while, dipped in and out of A and B and now find themselves back in C. Ascoli. Another team from Serie A who've gone boom, all the way down to C, back up into B, now back into C. Now, don't get me wrong, I know I'm a year or so in the future here, but these clubs, they, I mean, one thing I've noticed is there's no money in Italy at the minute, unless you like the couple of the elite. Everybody else is struggling, and so many teams have struggled and gone up and down, up and down. There's so many rebuild possibilities. Now, this is a big team, but this is a great club. Great opportunity if you're bored and you're looking for a save for yourself. This is a team that came from the depths of Italian football. And over what? 
a 15 year period found themselves in Serie A with a tiny little stadium they're now back in Serie C now I call them Piacenza if I get that wrong massive apologies um, but again this is a team that maybe punched above its weight once upon a time I remember them being in the top flight of Italy they too have just gone all the way down to D a few years ago and now they're trying to creep the way back up and they're currently in C now I've got more but I want to save them for the next episode I just want to keep filtering in these clubs where you that might inspire you because I know this is a time when we're all at home majority of us are at home you're bored you're looking for that save maybe one of these will just trigger something spark something in you and you'll make you want to play football manager again because we all should have a save on at all times because it's the best game ever so then let's start looking at some of these players now he's not necessarily my number one he's got the best star rating so i'm going to show him you first um i've brought in another goalkeeper who's older than him but he's decent angelo casade that's what we're calling him um decent my left back i'm well happy with uh filippo stavani and uh, 26 year old italian who again remember with Serie C, I think his all round game is exciting. His star rating is very good. The right back is called Andrea Gemignani, a Mancunian who can't pronounce. So there we go. He's only 24. He can cover at left back. Again, this level, super happy. My first centre half is Luca Iotti. You want to say Lotti? Um, but he's 24, so he's young. Again, can improve maybe as well. One of his potential partners is Giancomo Benedini. 26 year old again can prove a touch. Moving on to the defensive midfield, and we've got Dario Maltese, and he's 27 years old, can play in the centre as well, uh, but he should be playing defensive midfield and mainly for me. In the middle, we've got Danilo Ambro, 21 year old Italian who was already here. Didn't play much for me last year, but he's young. I think he's got a bit better. I like his potential, that's why I've kept him and according to my staff he's my best midfielder so he should get a few more games this year next up is Mattia Moroni another free signing I don't spend a penny um, I like this guy's all round game for this level I think he should be a good midfielder over to the right winger we brought in Francesco Bombardi I love Italian names um, right winger 30 um, but got good ability I like it I think you know it could be better in a lot of areas, but I think at this level it'll be quick enough. We'll have enough technique. Over to the left, we've got Nicola Strambelli. Um, again, similar kind of player. Again, I think he'll be good. He's 31 years old, so hopefully he's just peaking. My number one striker is Gianmarco P Piccione. 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 That's what we're going for. Um, decent finisher, decent all round. And again, you know, it is what it is. I'm hoping, though, these guys can gel together seeing as 10 of them are brand new and we can shock people let's just gloss over a few others we have got another backup striker here he's brand new francesco grandolfo he's all right 28 years old and um, we've got another player here who can play up front can play on the wings he's got a good finisher 14 finishing manuel fish nala i mean a lot of these players are obviously italian but that's the best we're gonna do in the middle we've got mark hamill <laughs> It's not Luke Skywalker. It's Zachariah Ham Lilly. Brilliant player. 29 years old. Um, if we go back to the defence, you know, I've got some other centre halves who are just as good as the, the other geezer. 32 year old called, called Marino. Dan Marino. Do you know who Dan Marino is? You should do. Come on. Even if you're not an NFL fan, Dan Bloody Marino. Dolphins legend. Um, <laughs> Luca La Rossa. Luca, Luca La Rossa. A Luca, he doesn't look Italian, not to me. Um, and then my backup goalkeeper, who's about 400 years old, handsome fellow, um, Fumagalli. Fumagalli. So financially, we skin. I mean, I've brought in what, 800 grand? So I've doubled our money. There's no money. There's no money at this level. Um, I was just happy that they doubled my wage bill so I could bring these guys in. And if you look at them, they're all on like a grand a week, one and a half thousand pounds a week. Um, so you're not you're not breaking any banks are you staff wise mega changes like i said we kept the staff didn't we when i first came here because they were the best as soon as we came up they weren't the best some of the contracts coming to an end and i thought right it's time to actually go out there and look this time uh, and not only have i really refreshed it I'm, i feel really good about it now now it's not perfect i like it to be perfect but it's not it's a work in progress Do you know what i mean i need more scouts at this point i could do another physio at this point 
I haven't got the coaching slots to get all yellow at this point, but we've definitely improved. One of those improvements was my assistant manager, Giuseppe De Fudis, 37-year-old Italian, and played for some half-decent teams, Torino, stuff like that, um, and he looks pretty good. So obviously we've got no money, so I can't improve any of the facilities. None of them have been downgraded as of yet, which is great. Um, but that's only going to be a matter of time if we don't start investing. We ain't got the money. I've got no money. There's no way I'm going to make any money. I'm not in Europe, not in nowhere. I've been trying to, with this series, tell you some of the things I do that I don't always show you. One of them you should always do, and these are something I think you should always check. Once you've got your squad set for the season, and the season's about to start, you need to do this, I think. Go to your captains, you'll have your two captains already picked. Make sure you pick your backup captains. Go to your set pieces, make sure you pick your set piece takers because this will change. If you forget to do this, you're kind of missing out. You won't have the best people doing the things you need, free kicks, corners and all that. And sometimes within the summer, you can forget. You've made your signings, you forget to check this. You've got some randoms. I know the computer might pick your best ones anyway. I just think it's best for you to do it. Same with your penalties too. Just run through these little things at the start of the season. Make sure everything's checked. Coaches too, make sure you go into your new coaching team. Obviously, I've got a new one. And make sure you sort the assignments out um, as best you can. Obviously, this needs a lot of work. It hurts my eyes, but it's a work in progress, like I keep saying. When it came to pre-season, we only had three games. And the reason is um, we're in the Coppa Italia C, or whatever it is. And there's a game at the beginning of this and a game at the end of it. So I felt that was sufficient enough games to play before the actual season kicked off. Um, but... We went on a tour of Malta. I basically get two choices for tours, Israel and Malta. That's it. But you know, it's a nice little country. Bit of sunshine. So yeah, the start of the Coppa Italia di Serie C is a group stage. Uh, three teams in it. So you play two games. Uh, we won one and drew one. So we drew with Vibonese. Um, and then we beat Sicula Leonzio. What the frig? We're into the main bit now. It's not been drawn all the next round. Um, and they're not that bothered about it. We'll see what happens, oh, eh? Why not? We'll see what happens. Um, Serie C just wants to reach a playoff, which, you know, the book is a bit dicting. We'll be deep into it. I just want to get right as high as we can. Promoted would be lovely. High into the playoffs as possible, so we'll, we'll play as less, well, lesser games as possible. That would be the nicest scenario. I'm just showing you the transfers for this season for our league, and you can see for yourself. There's no money. I mean, we've brought in 825 grand, and that's something special. I've had to sell two good young prospects who are okay um, to bigger teams. No one else has really brought any money in. No one else has spent any money. Can I add to this? Can I keep growing this club? Some of you, have, well, quite a lot of you actually commented that you've played Palermo already this year. It's a great team. It's a great challenge. I think they're a great club. I love the kits. I've been looking into trying to get a kit, but wow, that's tough. Um, I will get one, though. Really, really want one now. Um, but yeah, can I add to this and grow this team? We have a big club, 30,000 seat stadium, which we can easily fill when we're in the top flight. But like most clubs, you're going to have a dip in attendance unless you've got super loyal fans when you drop down as far as we have. Um, but we had a fan day. We did a fan day. So these are things you can look for, ask your board for, check for things that are popping up. Um, so we've had a fan day to hopefully get in... Uh, some fans, it was a massive success apparently, we got a good crowd. So it's actually the 16th of January and I'm a bit devastated, not because we're not top of the league, I think I'm very happy with that, you can see that right there, but because I film these things at the minute at 5am, half 5, sometimes 6, while the wife and son are in bed, just so I can get it done in peace. That's why I look like shit most of the time. Um, and I made myself a brew and it was dead nice and I put it over there and I forgot about it and it's gone cold. <sighs> So we've actually been doing pretty well. I've got no one um, scoring me tons of goals. In fact, that blonde lad, the left winger, he just looked to me like the best striker. He can play up front and on the left wing. I'll show you in a sec. He looked like the best player because of his finishing. He cannot score a goal to save his life. We, in fact, have the second best defence, which I'm chuffed with because it's completely brand new. Uh, and that's the risk you're going to take in it when you're doing complete rebuilds, but maybe because of the league we're in. The situation everyone else is in. I think a lot of other teams are doing a lot of ins and outs, ins and outs. People on short-term contracts, people leaving, jumping ship. There's not a lot in it. And there's not a lot in the goals, really. We're neck and neck with our rival. Um, and Barry, who are probably one of the biggest teams in the league, the top of the goals. But yeah, I think there isn't a lot in it. It's all about the tactic. Have faith in it, even if it ain't perfect. 
have a bit of faith in it. Sometimes stick with it, and your players will eventually know it. Uh, and staff get the best staff you can, and it's all about making them decisions and training decisions. But to be fair, we're doing okay. We started off really well, three wins, and we lost a couple, won some, drawn one against probably the best team in the league. Uh, and we've been pretty good. We're not super awesomely consistent, but we're looking good. In some games, we're looking scary good. One of the games I'm going to show you is against one of our biggest rivals, um, Catania, who again, big ass team. I think I showed you them in the last episode, who have been up there and they've come down just like we have. Um, but it pretty, I mean, it was a pretty even game, but Piccioni and Floriano got us the goals. One at the beginning, one at the end. Great game for us. Now he has scored goals, don't get me wrong. He's got four in 13 in the league. He scored none in the cup. I just thought he'd be better, a better striker. He's an actual left winger. He's right footed though. But it was his finishing, his off the ball composure were decent. Um, so I played him a lot up front. But I think if we go up or not, he, he needs to switch back over and become a left winger. But I just need an out and out goal scorer. But luckily we seem to be putting the ball in the back of the net from all over. Now you might be thinking, I've already showed you this game. I haven't. This is the cup now when we beat our rival 2-0 again. Sorry to my friend, one of my most loyal subscribers. I can't pronounce his name. He's got numbers in it and stuff. Um, but he's a good guy and he's a fan of Catania. Um, also Stoke. So, yeah, I think he's Italian. So, um, yeah, 2-0 again. Strombelli, Bombardi. Wingers extraordinaire. Put us through. Well, we came up against one of the best teams in the league. I think they've just come down as we've come up. So they should have more quality than us. Um, and they're up there at the top with us. Um, and they've knocked us out. But this ain't a bad thing, is it? We've got a new team here. Let's just concentrate on that league. Let's concentrate on getting Palermo out of it. Now, this is my squad arranged by average rating. And I've highlighted the main players. And it's like anything, really. You bring players in, but you don't know. Especially with something like this, when you've brought in so many. You don't know who's going to be better than others. So, you know, there's been some learning. There's been some players who have surprised me, some players who maybe I thought would be good and have let me down a touch. Um, but it's totally fine. I'm happy with how things are going um, because we've been doing well in the league. Um, but some of these guys have been brilliant. The left back, Filippo Stembani, uh, Strambelli on the left wing. Ambro, the guy who didn't play much last year, but he's found his feet this year. Give him a chance. He's one of the originals. We're just ticking over we're not really losing any money we're not gaining any money we're just sitting flat kind of at the same thing i've not sold any players or anything not really spent and not spent anything not giving out any new contracts staff for exactly the same so that's a positive for now so obviously it's a new squad but a lot of them have got me back and um, some of them who were playing haven't i don't know why maybe they're just miserable gets um but you know we're positive here no one's against me we're in this to do something special so let's crack on now we jump back here at the 10th of march for a reason it's because my first ever job interview with a team called cremonese is Serie b the 14th is Serie b which is pretty respectable but who are they it sounds like it's some it sounds like something you put on a salad doesn't it um but i'm palermo man i'm like you know i've got an armani jacket on here that's just come from primarni for now we've just got to get it back to armani do you know what i mean primarni is primark it's a cheap budget clothing store in England, just in case you're not from England. Um, but yeah, Cremonese. Never. It's never going to happen. But thank you very much. I'm flattered. We're now back and it's April the 3rd. Um, still got no, no one in the goal scorers. Um, my left back's now the second best player in the league, but that's okay. I'll forgive you, mate. Um, what I do like, though, is my goalkeeper. I might have forgot to tell you about him. He was a late addition. I signed him pretty much on a free near deadline day. Come from Avellino. So I showed you the other two goalkeepers and they were decent. But he's better. Now he's eccentric. His first touch is appalling. One on one's passing. Out of this world's shit. But he's got good handling. Good uh, reflexes. Agility. He's only 25. So as you can see, it's been all about Serie C. And we've not got many games left. And the next game is Derby Day. We have a new coach in, new physios in, new scouts in. We're getting there. Just got to work on this. I mean, if we went up, that would probably change again. But if we stay here, we're getting better. It's a slow, slow process, but it's a process. I freaking love. He's not a world beater, but he was a great player in his day. Won some great trophies for Arsenal. Um, been a manager in Spain, so fair play. I brought him in to, to teach people how to defend. 
So there's a big run in here. It's going to be tense really. We've got games left to play. Trapani who are trying to get bounced straight back up at top of the league. But only by a point. But then our arch rival will be us by two. And we've got to go to their place now and play. Uh, barrier in there. Not too far away either. Anything can happen. I just... I felt like we're going to be in the playoffs here. And we had four games left to play. And we won them all. And I'm just going to show you this one. And we're going to enjoy it. And share in the goals. Because it was even. They, they tend to be quite even. Um, but the other two games. Obviously they've not been able to score. And they've been at our place. Haven't they? This is the first time we've gone to their place. Um, and, and I mean the passion was intense. I felt the pressure. Um, but you know we won. The next one 2-0. Then 1-0. Then 1-0. Brilliant running. But it wasn't enough. We dropped points. Early on in the season, as you can see, in Serie C, we finished second. Which meant we went into the playoffs and we started off against Robo Siena. Uh, decent team and 1-1 uh, away. Brought back to our place for the second leg in the quarters. I mean, this is the best you, got. you get into the quarters, don't you? Still a lot to do, especially because everything's too bloody-legged. So, um, yeah, Luca Lottoyenko scored us the goals. To play Navarro, who are another team? that have been in Serie A, climbed the way up, got into Serie A, crashed and burned back down to sea. And we won the first game, 2-1. Brilliant game, to be fair, but again, even this has been, this is a battle. Nerve-wracking, fun battle. A battle to the death. I mean, look at this for close. Stat-wise, goal-wise. I mean, they've scored, battled on, battled on, I threw everything at him. I mean, look how many subs you can make at this level, by the way. Another former Serie A team. Both of us battling out in a Serie C playoff when a couple of years ago we were playing against each other in the Serie A. But whew, extra time job of this. I have ungone by the skin of my bloody teeth. They'd finished fourth in their league and we finished obviously second. So I felt like we deserved it. But I mean, they created more. They just didn't play well enough. We, we had some good performances for my boys. So we've done it. So happy we've done it. And I've done it with a good team effort. A brand new team. It's a joy to put them together. They had some absolutely amazing moments. We only lost four games. So, you know, I feel like we deserve to go up. But it, that is a battle. Them playoffs are insanely intense. But I could not recommend this league enough. I just want to say, I feel like we're getting in now. I think getting into Sevilla B is great. But this next year is going to be tough. But we are a big club. I mean, look at our stadium, by the way. I think it's great and one thing I like about it and everyone slags off the um, graphics on them and a lot of the time the stadium looks nothing like it does in real life but if you check out what our stadium looks like and then you look at the football manager version in 3D I think it's one of the most realistic ones you can find it looks just like it which makes you feel well better when you're playing the games but yeah super super proud now unlike on my journey man there are players out there who I could have signed on a free building up to the season um, but I've got no money, I've got no wiggle room in my wages, so I couldn't offer out any contracts. Now, don't get me wrong, that has just changed now, because we're at the end of the year, and this is the budget they're giving me for Sevier B. Now, these are the only players whose contracts are coming to an end. One of them is retiring, and some of them have just been squad players. Uh, Strambelli needs a new deal, he's the only one I'm looking at and crapping myself because he was so good for me. Hopefully, he can do that again next year. So, I mean, last year was great. We did the double in Serie D, but I think we should have done that because we came from so far down. We had enough quality. This year was a fresh thing. Obviously, got knocked out in the cup and we've managed to scrape our ass out of this division in the playoffs. So, no silverware, but I still think that is a success. And it's something I'm, I'm really, I was really proud of. And yeah, I've already got stuck into season three. You better come back for it. This is Serie A. So, this is the top flight. This is where I want to be. And what's nice is the Inter have won. The league the last two years freshening it up a bit but i mean i am not even considering trying to win this thing competing with these boys is just hard they've got big time money and obviously there's a few of us coming up from different divisions of Serie C, and there's three teams leaving like spa Brescia, and so on but then look at some of the other teams empoli and chievo and also there's no more copper c d e f g cup it's the proper copper italia when you're in Serie b in it have to qualify or whatever start at the bottom work your way up but that's exciting you might get to play against a big boy uh, and Inter have won it this year beating Lazio in the final doing the double so there we have it that's the end of episode 2 hopefully you enjoyed it enough to smash the like button and consider coming back for episode 3 it's going to be a massive season in Serie B I sign an absolute legend the Peanuts who's maybe a bit old but what a beast seriously 
seriously need to come back so as always thank you for taking time out of your busy day make sure you smash that like button make sure you subscribe if you're new make sure you go and pledge to my patreon if you really want to help a brother out brother from another mother love you very much i hope you and your family are safe during these troubling coronavirus times and uh, so for me and my family we wish you all the best and hope to see you very very soon i'm booed i'll see you next time